I want to talk about uh, Shawshank Redemption. So uh, I got to see Shawshank. Thank you, uh, Nikolai, Nicholas uh, Navarro. Thank you uh, for the contribution. Um, I saw Shawshank Redemption again uh, last night in, in preparation for doing the show today. As I said, uh, Dave Goodman paid me $500 to do it. And I have to say, after watching it again, maybe the third or fourth time in my life that I've seen it, I saw it when it first came out, that I, the Chosha Redemption, I think, based on my knowledge of movies, Chosha Redemption is a really good movie. Um, and it's, it's, it's really good in, in many, many, many dimensions. Indeed, I would argue that Chosha Redemption is um, one of the best movies made in the last uh, 40 years. It's a movie, uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I'd say definitely go watch it. It, it, you know, it's it's. Uh, I, I think it's it's supremely enjoyable. Uh, it's a movie that was made in um, 1994, so for for many of you, it's like a classic it's from a long time ago, a classic. But this is a terrific movie uh, in every aspect. It's beautifully acted, just beautifully. I mean, it's it's Tim Robbins by far. Tim Robbins plays the main character. Tim Robbins by far best performance. But I also think it's Morgan Friedman's best performance. Morgan Friedman is excellent in it. Um, you know, so acting is superb. I think in every aspect of the movie-making way, the, the, the cinematography is beautiful and amazing. Um, the things that the cinematographer chooses to focus on versus things that it doesn't focus on. Uh, the way it lays out the prison, the way it creates that claustrophobic sense of what's going on there. The things that it chooses to show you and the things that it chooses not to show you, for example, it, it doesn't choose to show you the extreme horrific violence that is involved in the movie. You don't need to see it, uh, including sexual violence. You don't need to see it, but it's there and it's got a presence. It's got this mechanism of narration that doesn't always work. In many movies, doesn't because it kind of distances you from what's going on. I think in Shawshank Redemption, it actually works really, really well. Um, I, 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 I think it's, it's, uh, it lays out the story, it gives you the highlights, it gives you the, 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 the things that you need to know in order to understand what's going, what's happening, what's going on. And it, it gives you an intimate connection with the character of Morgan Freeman, who is doing the narration. You get to learn about him as much as you get to learn about the plot. You get to learn about his character and what kind of person he is. And, 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 and that, is all, that is all good. Um, it's, a, it's a movie that manages to handle some difficult topics, topics that have to do with redemption, topics that have to do with, uh, you know, criminals. These are criminals, with the exception of, of the lead character. Everybody in the movie is a criminal. They're all murderers. Most of them are murderers, not all of them. Morgan Friedman, we never know what exactly crime he committed, but it sounds like he murdered somebody. And it is a movie about redemption and about, about uh, rehabilitating oneself and what that means. Uh, and I think it's quite effective in doing that. Um, it also, it's a, I think, deeply psychologically interesting movie in the sense of the kind of psychology you develop in prison and how difficult it is for prisoners to leave prison and how, how they, they get kind of a, 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 they associate their life with prison and they can't tolerate life outside. I think that's, that was really interesting and, and I think, again, important for all of this, for the, for the theme of the movie. Um, but the most interesting thing about the movie is its lead character. Tim Robbins, or uh, um, you know, who who plays Andy Dupree, Andy Dupree, uh, set in Massachusetts. Andy Dupree is falsely accused of murdering his wife and and love and and her lover. Um, it's not a crazy accusation. There's lots of evidence to suggest that he actually did it. Um, but he, but I think we all, as as viewers, know from the beginning that he did not. We don't know who did at the beginning. We, but we know it wasn't him. Um, again, even that feature of it is, is, is that when the discovery about who is the murderer comes through, it's a very clever, I think, plot twist, plot device that is used. Um, Andy Dupre is a banker. One of the few positive, not just positive, heroic portrayals 
other banker ever in all of movie making. Just that would get Shawshank Redemption high on my list of favorite movies. But he's a smart banker. And one of the themes of the movie, and, and ultimately the theme of the movie, is that, if you will, redemption, success, and even hope, and hope is, is this mixed uh, term, um, even hope because uh, hope is, requires reason, requires thinking, requires using your mind, requires engagement, thinking, focus. And the beautiful thing about this movie, which is so rare in movies, particularly prison movies, is just the way in which Andy Dupre survives prison and ultimately gets out of prison. I'm going to try not to give too many spoilers. Gets out of prison through the use of his own mind. You know, he's, he's in a real, for a variety of reasons, he's in a really bad situation in this prison. Things are not going way well for him. But there's a scene in which he overhears one of the guards talking about a a tax thing that he has. And he basically goes up to God and says, I can solve this for you. I mean, the God almost kills him because how dare he talk to him. But he basically provides a solution for this God's tax problem, which then, which then turns his whole life around in prison. Because he, he becomes a tax advisor to all the prison guards and he starts doing the fraudulent accountant, accounting of the prison warden and his relationship to all of that changes dramatically. And yet, even when he's doing that, even when he's riding high, even when it seems like he's got a lot to lose, the thing I love about Andy Dupre, beyond not just the fact that he's using his mind, using his reason, is that he never loses his love of life. Here's another lesson for all of you. Never loses his love of life. Never loses his love of beauty. My favorite scene in Shawshank Redemption, my favorite scene in Shawshank Redemption, since chills down, is Andy Dupre is just, he's running the library. That's one of the better jobs that he's gotten because he has, uh, he's helping out the guards and the warden with all this money stuff. But he gets a, uh, he gets a batch of new records for the library. And he's playing around with the records. He's looking at the records. And he takes out a record of Mozart's, um, oh God, what was it? Anyway, one of Mozart's operas. And he puts it on the record player in the office. And uh, the guard has gone to the bathroom. He locks the guard in the bathroom. And he turns it on. He turns it, he turns it on and he starts, Marriage of Figaro, thank you, Tom, Thomas. He turns it on and he starts listening to it. And wow, he's having a good time. He's enjoying it. And the guard in the bathroom starts hearing this. He goes, he starts yelling, what's going on there? And then Andy Dupre has this great idea. He takes the microphone that projects into all of the cells and all of the prison. And he turns it on. And he, and he, and he starts, um, he starts uh, transmitting this aria. Sui Aria, it's a duet, two female voices from the marriage of Figaro, into the prison. And everybody stops. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just telling you about it. Everybody stops. All these hardened criminals stop. Beauty. Beauty in its most, in a sense, most abstract form, but most immediately emotional form is projected into their lives. And Andy Dupre... The warden now has come. Everybody wants him to turn this off. He's going to get into massive problems of this. He's going to be beaten up. He's going to be sent into isolation. It's all worth it for this moment of beauty. It's all worth it to feel alive, to feel free, and to share that moment with all these other people. It's just a beautiful, beautiful little piece of the movie. It's just a few minutes. 
but it's just so stunning in its emotional impact on you, the viewer, on the emotional impact it's having on the, on the, on, on the prisoners. And, and so it's an amazing, amazing scene. And it's truly beautiful. And it shows, the thing about Andy Dupree is he's a man of reason who loves life. The best line in the movie, the best line in the movie, which I think in a sense captures the whole movie, is the line, let's see if I get it right, because I have to get it right, right? <laughs> Maybe some of you will correct me if I get it wrong. Get busy living or get busy dying. In a sense, that's the only alternative in life. This could be a, a your wrongs rules for life. Get busy living or get busy dying. That is the only alternative in life. If you're not busy living, if you're not busy living, which means acting, which means doing, which means thinking, which means focusing on your life to make it better in every aspect possible available to you, if you're not doing that, then basically you're getting busy dying. So you either live with a capital L or you're slowly diminishing yourself and you're slowly dying. Pursue values. And that's the thing about this movie. In every point of this movie, Andy Dupre is pursuing values. And it turns out at every point in this story, Andy Dupre is pursuing his freedom because freedom is a value. This movie is about the pursuit of values in every dimension. And in many respects, what he's teaching the Morgan Friedman character, and the redemption is really not Andy Dupre's. The redemption is the Morgan Friedman's redemption. And in a sense, anybody that, Tim Rob that uh, Andy Dupre is touches in the movie, he's teaching them to be valuers. There's a young kid who comes in, a little thug, you know, who keeps getting caught stealing stuff. <laughs> Andy Dupre at some point says, you know, you're not very good at the stuff. You can be caught. You might want to think about doing something else with your life. Um, but the point is, he teaches the kids to value his life. He gets them enrolled and in, in, in pursue a, um, uh, a, um, a, what do you call it, a, a high school degree. Morgan Friedman goes from just in a sense, accepting his lot, living his life, to starting to think as a valuer. So the redemption is everybody else is not Andy Dupre. Andy Dupre never needed redemption. Andy Dupre facilitates everybody else's redemptions by teaching them to value, by teaching them to get busy living. Get busy living. And in that sense, it's such a powerful, good movie with good values. How rare is that? With a fantastic hero. There's nothing wrong with Andy Dupre. I mean, I mean he, he clearly makes a mistake early on in the movie. But morally, this guy is perfect. He's rational. He's willing to fight for his values. His hope doesn't come from empty hope. Because hope can be something completely empty. His hope doesn't come from emptiness. His hope comes from his values, from the fact that he knows how to achieve them. His hope comes from his constant busyness around living. He is busy living. So I think the movie's excellent. I loved it. I think everybody should watch it. I think it will inspire you. You're, you're, I mean, if you don't have the biggest smile ever on your face when it's over, and that, I, I guess I'm giving away a little bit, but that's okay, um, then I, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. I mean, I love Andy Dupre. I, I love Morgan Friedman. Uh, they, are, they are just 
fantastic characters, the people you, you fall in love with, and you, you want to embrace and you want them to win and you want them to be successful and you watch every step and you're anxious, particularly the first time you watch the movie, you're anxious about what's going to happen. Is this going to be one of those dark prison movies? Is it going to all end in tragedy? Is it all going to be horrible? So I've taken a little bit of that anxiety away, but how it evolves, I'm not going to tell you because there are too many spoilers and I think there are too many cool twists. The warden is evil. Evil is evil. Good is good. How much better does it get than that? Evil is evil and good is good. So um, go see. You can rent it on Prime. You can rent it on Apple TV. You can, you can get it on any way you want. It's, it's easy to watch. And it is a truly, truly fantastic movie and, and, and fun to watch. Don't you miss movies that are fun to watch? I mean, put aside Game of Thrones and all these other ways everybody's being slaughtered and you have to watch every little trickle of blood and brain splattered all over the world and over the place. Here's a movie that's well-written, well-produced, well-directed. Uh, the music is terrific. I don't know who wrote the music, but the music is terrific. Um, every, it's, oh, it's based, by the way, on a Stephen King novel. A short story, actually, short novel by Stephen King. Stephen King's a great storyteller. Um, the director is Frank uh, uh, Darabont. I think this is the best movie he made, but he did do some Indiana Jones movies and other popular movies. But this is, this is, I think, the movie he made. It's in every respect of the movie-making profession. I think this is well done, well made. It stands the test of time. Uh, what is it? Uh, 28 years ago it was made. Um, the fact that I'm telling you the warden is bad is not a spoiler. The fact that he's corrupt, I don't think is a spoiler. Um, no, I don't think any of those are spoilers. I mean, the only thing I said was a spoiler was that you, you're going to end the movie with a smile on your face. That's the only spoiler, I think. But I'm not going to tell you what the rest is. Um, so I encourage you, encourage you to watch this movie. Really encourage you. I think of all the movies I've reviewed, this is, well, I mean, this is the, the, the most enjoyable of all of them and, and probably in many respects the best as a whole. It just stands as a whole. It's just a good integrated work of art. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.